to Soda Time Restoration. Uh, if you're just tuning in with us, this will be part six. Part six. Uh, we just finished the blocking on the body filler. Uh, a few areas we're finishing up right now on the coin door. We have finished uh, everything on the main door. Got everything feeling really, really good. Um, some people have asked me, uh, what are you using for, for body filler? I'm using the Pro Grip Martin Senior uh, part number 1015. Basically had a 2K product on here from the Sandblaster. Uh, I went in and blocked that, then went in and did some finish work with a little bit of body filler. Uh, I have blocked that now. I'm getting ready to put a De Beer product on, uh, a, a Surfacer product, a, kind of a 2K product, 8-145. Uh, Stay with us, and I'll kind of give you some product uh, info here a little bit on where we're at on the, on the Vendo 39. Okay, so getting back to uh, where we're at, uh, everything was sandblasted. Uh, I usually go, I think I, I, I showed you in the last video, we were at 150 on that blocking. I'm now jumped up to 320. Uh, 320 is what I finished with before I put my last 2K product down, but uh, I try to get everything as smooth as possible, no edges. Uh, this particular uh, uh, area here, if you want to get inside with uh, you get in these real tight areas, I'd say get a gray Scotch Bright pad. If you've not heard of Scotch Bright, it's kind of a rough surface. Probably, I'm not for sure on the gray. I want to say it's probably like maybe 600 grit. Don't quote me on that, I'm not for sure. But that will get into the inside of these areas that are really hard. If you got a piece of paper, at least get that scuffed up. But main door, we'll get a little closer shot here. Main door, you'll always see some areas like this. And obviously these areas, somebody's kicked it. Uh, I try to flatten those out just as much as possible. But uh, as you see, everything pretty nice, pretty nice. We'll get some more uh, 2K product primer filler on there and hopefully do a finish block on that. Uh, let's take a look at the cabinet. Always in the bottom cabinet area. Now this, this Vendo 39 was pretty, was, was really actually pretty nice. You will see some holes a little bit in there. And what I do is I'll go in and... Uh, Sometimes lay a little bit of fiberglass over the top if it's not too bad. On this particular one, I'm actually going to have this piece here powder coated. But it's a, it's a fitted sheet that'll fit right down inside the end here. So that's going to clean that up really good. The cabinet, pretty nice, pretty nice. I always, I haven't done the last finished sand on this, but it's... It's looking really good. If, you, if you're feeling across there, you should not feel any of those edges uh, coming across there. Back, same way. Uh, you'll always see some little highs and lows, but once I get that last 2K uh, primer sealer on there, it's gonna look really, really good. Complete block stage. We've uh, now went through everything with any dents. We have blocked that out. I have applied another 2K primer on top of all that. So we're getting ready to do the last block. Um, probably we'll see, hopefully, uh, by the end of this video, we'll have everything on the final block.
usually like to finish everything in about 600 grit. We'll put a little bit of guide coat down. Just to see if we're getting everything totally covered. What I'm using is just a regular flat black. I know 3M has a, a, a wipe on product that you can wipe on, do the same thing. I'm pretty well old school. Uh, everything I do is something I learned 25, 30 years ago. But this guide coat will help see any flaws. Typically, uh, I'll use uh, 600 grit on a final block. Taking a sheet of paper, I'll use a flat block. Sometimes you use a sponge pad at this stage. It might be a little bit uh, too soft, so I like to get something fairly firm. Get it blocked out. Sometimes, and today I'll, I'll dry block it, but sometimes uh, I'll take this and do a, a wet sand on it. Wet sand the whole thing down. We might even do that here in this segment, just to kind of show the difference. Kind of like it, it keeps the, the paper unplugged. But uh, we're gonna let this dry just a little bit and we'll be right back with you here. Okay, got that dried. Uh, just let that coating get a little dry. If you start too quickly, it will uh, gum up your paper. But uh, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to start with 320 and then we're going to finish with 600. So uh, let's see how things go here. In case some of you just started and run across this video, we're probably in a 12 part series. We're in probably number six right now. But if you want to back up this Bendo 39, we're going to do a start to finish, complete tear down, which obviously we've already went through. And then we're going to go all the way through the paint process, how to do the lettering. So I've got two ways I, I do the lettering on the embossed lettering for the drink Coca-Cola and the ice cold. I always try to sand in an angle, try not to make too many long strokes every now and then you just have to. Keep that block always flat and going across. In an angle. When you get to the edges here, I'll show you what I kind of do to do the edges. Get these, you'll see sometimes ripples on these edges. Let me make sure we're seeing this. Yeah, sometimes you'll see some, some OE creases. I, I don't like them in there. I think it looks like this was unfinished. Obviously the, the guy that's wanting the, the factory looking machine, I get it. Uh, I just like my uh, my body work to look like it's complete instead of something that got missed. When you get to the lettering, 3 makes a scotch bright pad. This is a, I believe it's an 07447. Um, I take, usually and cut this one in half kind of about hand size and where you got your lettering go in there and I've seen it many times the guy that does not sand in those little interior areas or they try to use sandpaper it shows up in the paintwork so I always use a gray scotch right pad that's about 600 grit I think is the gray 
to do that in the lettering area. That really cleans it up really nice and keeps it consistent. Doesn't put a lot of sand scratches in there. Do the same thing on that ribbon. Get that, that little rib there. Don't use, if you get paper in there, you'll, 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 you'll jab a line and you'll notice it in your paintwork. As far as I'm concerned, the paint the paint part, this prep part right now, is what makes a difference in that paint job, getting it correct, getting it right, get all the little dings out. If you'll take uh, a sheet like this, Hold it about hand size and we'll do a soft pad. It's just kind of a, a little pad that you can wrap around the paper. I kind of use it uh, several ways. But that gives you something so your fingers aren't pushing into the into the surface as hard. You're not just pushing with your fingers, you're actually pushing against the whole pad. We're gonna, we're gonna flip it here and see if we can make it uh, stay a little better. You wrap it around there like that, keep it from falling off. Obviously this is a slow phase. It's the one that if you're taking it to a painter, you're wondering why it's taking so long. This is why you gotta you gotta do things right. Keep your paper still blocking sideways. So I'm still at 320. I still consider this a blocking stage, getting everything level. The 2K primer is my go-to primer at this stage. I would say probably your first coat of primer on bare metal, if you if if he's shooting bare metal, uh, try to use an epoxy that has great attachment to steel. If he doesn't have any epoxy, or if you're doing it yourself, uh, you'll have to etch it. You'll have to put some kind of etch down. I go both ways. This particular machine, uh, it got coated at the sandblasting stage. When you're blocking, you're getting really, if you want to get really particular, I think we can see this here. This is kind of my first, first block. As you can see, some highs and low there. When we get done, this needs to be no, nothing, no dark underneath there at all. It should be all gray. That tells you right there, you got this block totally, totally flat. So make sure on this particular stage to get this blocked totally flat. And don't see any of these highs and lows. Uh, we'll, we'll keep going here. I might give you a shot here how this, this is 320 grit. You can see I didn't make that many passes, but you don't want to stop too early. You want to get it smooth as possible. And this is always a critical area around the drink Coca-Cola. I want to have it the best it can be. Now I'll let you look at it. Now you see you see a little bit of uh, low spots there. You can see it there where I didn't get them. Try not to get into the Coca-Cola. Uh, but yeah, you want it just like that. All right, we're gonna do the, the gray scotch right here. Sometimes I will take and do that first right across the face. You want that lettering really smooth. And it's gonna show up in your work. So I always do a block across the lettering 
in one of my earlier videos, I did show where you could block through. I would paint, like this particular machine here, I would paint all the drink Coca-Cola white. The ice cold down here and the drink Coca-Cola painted everything base coat white. Come back in on probably, I'd probably put six or seven coats down, uh, just a base coat white because you need to have a little bit to work with. And then I would come back and paint the whole door red. And then I would get, I think I went down to 800 grit with a block and I'd start coming across it just like this. And you'll see that in, in one of the prior videos. And I literally would block through until you went through the red until the white come through. What I'm gonna show you on this particular machine is something that if you can put a decal down, I'm not saying we're putting decal on, but if you can put a decal on top of this drink Coca-Cola, uh, it is going to look just as good as somebody uh, did the lettering for you. I am not a good letter, but when it comes to it, that is, you're just, you're just a really, it just takes a special person to do it. I've tried it, done it, just not happy with it. it. Takes me forever. This process here that I'm going to show you will be a little quicker, and it might be people don't like it. I don't know. I think it looks really good when I get done. It looks just like you had it hand lettered. But those guys, that is a talent, a God given talent. Man, I wish I could do it. Once again, get in every groove when you're doing this with this gray scotch bright get as, as smooth as you can all the rough edges inside these little areas like this even as you see drink coca-cola looks really really good Use the log over thing, everything once, and then come back in with a fresh sheet and hit it one more time. Start at the top. Uh, we haven't done this top side yet. Let's get it right quick. One of the questions that come up, what can you get down to on base coat? You know, I like probably 400, 320, maybe, but that's why I go to 600, just a little bit, Another, it's another sand, but it's just so much smoother. And then I use base coat, clear coat, There might be some single stage guys out there. I'm still definitely hooked on base coat, clear coat on on finish work, especially where I'm two toning something. I've got several layers. These little crevice areas like this, definitely, if you need to, get in there with a, a half a round get into those crevices obviously it needs to be smoothed up too and make sure everything gets something right now I'm using 600 on this area it wasn't really good I think we're going to go to the next stage on this one. Uh, we'll get the guide coat on and then I think I'll do a, a finished block sand uh, wet. 
on the cabinet and this. So bear with us here. We'll be right back. If this is your first time, hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much. I had no idea that many people would be interested in seeing some guy put a Coke machine, tear one down and put it together. But thank you for, for watching. And uh, we will have more video we're going to try to get going on this Vendor 39 I'd like to have it this thing uh, accomplished uh, within the oh hopefully the next 30 days we're going to be close it might be a little past the 30 but we'll see but uh, thanks for stopping by and uh, we'll see you here in a bit.